Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. This is a tutorial for beginners. Um, I will explain to you how you can do this uh, retro joystick um, using Blender. Um, so let's uh, start this tutorial. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is to add the picture to our scene. So let's find some space here. Click here to create a new window. Select here image editor and open the image that I have downloaded to the desktop. Um, I will place uh, a link to download this picture on the description of the video, so don't worry about it. Another thing, um, during this tutorial if you have any doubt of which keys or uh, which buttons of the mouse am I clicking, you can always look at the bottom right of the screen that uh, I have my screencast keys uh, activated. Okay. So, uh, in this scene, we don't need for now the light and the camera. Let's select them and press the delete or the X key to remove them. And now let's use the cube to make the, the base of the numpad. First thing is to scale it. Uh, as you probably know, we can, we can use the S key. Okay, or you can use uh, this menu over here. I'm sorry, uh, this one. I prefer to use the keys because they are faster, uh, but uh, in, the, in the beginning uh, I know that it can be a little complicated, but I surely advise you to, to learn all the key shortcuts because at, uh, at the long term they will be very, very helpful to you. So press S and then let's scale them on the X axis a little bit, so S and then X to lock them on the X axis and then S and Y to scale it on the Y axis. I think that is good, we can adjust uh, the measures later, that's no, no big problem. Uh, next thing, let's click on Tab to enter in edit mode and then we need to add two loop cuts over here to make this edge as you can see on the, the reference picture. So to do that you can hit Control R okay, and then move your mouse up to increase the number of loop cuts. Click on the left click and then you can move the loop cuts but we want them on the center so you just need to press the ask key okay you can use this tool over here uh, this one uh, if you don't know the the shortcut keys but i think that is pretty much the same um, now that we have created our loop cuts um, they are very separated uh, we need to make them a little bit together so press 3 to go to the right view make sure that you have uh, this option over here x-ray selected so that you can see the back of, of your of your object let's press 3 again and let's select these vertices over here press G to grab them or to move them you can use the menu and then Z to lock them on the Z axis let's move it move it move them down a little bit okay I think that is good and then let's select these ones press G and Z to grab them on the Z axis and then let's move them up a little bit okay uh, the next step uh, is to select all these four edges so let's make sure that you have this option here activated the face I'm sorry edges <laughs> the faces Okay, let's click on this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, now we need to extrude them, but inwards. So to do that, we, pre we, can, we can press the E key to extrude them, as you can see. Okay, and then press the ESC key. What we have then is that we have extruded our faces, but we have left them exactly on the same place of the original ones. 
Um, I'm doing that because now I want to scale it inwards. So to do that, I will press S and then Shift Z to scale it on the X and on the Y except on Z axis. Okay. I will do this process again. So let's undo. Okay. We are finishing select the faces. So I'm doing it again. E to extrude and then ask. Now I have created four new faces exactly on the same places as the other ones. And then S to scale them and shift Z to scale them only on the, on the X and on the Y axis. I think they are good. Okay. But now, uh, as you can probably have noticed, the, the, the distance is a little bit bigger. So, yeah. Let's change it. Press 3 to go to the front mode, to the right view, I'm sorry. Make sure that you have the X ray activated. Select vertices over here. And then let's select these top vertices. Okay, press G to grab them and Z on the Z axis and let's move them down. Okay, I think they are good for now. Um, it's the first time that I'm seeing this on the, on the right view, so I think that uh, this, uh, the size of those two sides should be a little bigger. So let's select those edges. Again, make sure that you have X-ray activated so that you can select them. the other ones that are on the backwards, okay? And then G and Z to grab them on the Z axis. And let's do the same for the bottom, G and Z. Okay, I think that it is good. Um, if you look at the reference, you can see uh, this face is smaller than this one. <coughs> so let's select all these four vertices on top. Press S to scale them and let's scale them down a little bit. I think that is good. Let's do the same for the bottom. Press S. That's good. I think that on the bottom uh, they have uh, a little less curve, so let's scale it a little bit more on top. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's nice. And um, next step is to bevel those edges um, over over here. So, um, I will select these edges by clicking here, make sure that you have edge selector here and with shift back to select all the edges on top, okay. All the edges on the on the left with Alt and Shift, Alt and Shift, Alt and Shift, Alt and Shift, and now with Shift let's select this, this, and this. Okay. Now let's bevel those edges. Okay. Control B. And now with your mouse wheel up, you can define the number of edges that you want. Let's add two more. I think that this is good. Okay, perfect. If you leave the edit mode by clicking on tab and deactivate the X-ray, 
as you can see we have now the the base of our, our joystick next thing is to just to define to smooth those edges over here to do that we can go here to object and shade smooth okay um as you probably noticed it have created here um, some shadows and some effects that we don't want and um, that is because we we this edge uh, it have rounded this edge here so what we need to do is to add uh, two few more edge loops okay so control r control r over here and now oh i'm sorry as you can see i think that is very very good so let's click on tab to go to edit mode i think that the top is a little bit uh, um, a little bit uh, bigger so activate again the x-ray select vertices let's select the top press s and let's scale them down okay i think that is good now it's better press tab to go to edit mode again mm, but i think that we don't need to do anything else here the sizes are good so let's exit the edit mode and now we have created the base for for the the, the joystick next thing that we are going to make are these buttons over here um, and for that we need to click on 7 to go to the top view and then shift a to add mesh and then let's create a cylinder okay this cylinder was created in the middle of the object so press G to grab it and let's place it over here okay relative to the size i think that is good let's just move it up a little bit press g and z and then press s and z to scale it on the z axis let's move it down g and z okay i think they should stay that it should stay on the edge so G and Z S and Z G that is good okay that's good let's just move it up a little bit okay Mm, let me see again the size i don't know but i think that is too big let's scale it down and now we need to move it up a little bit press g and z okay i think that is good um now that we have created this part over here um let's do the button um we can create another cylinder or we can do it um on the um, on this one let's do it on this one press tab to go to edit mode okay click here to select uh, the faces let's select the top face and press i to inset the faces okay just a little bit now press e to extrude them on the z axis just a little bit too and now let's press i again that's 
Ooh. and now we need to make this all over here so let's press E and then ask and now we have created a new face with extrude but we have pressed the S key so the new face is exactly on the same place as the other one and then press G and Z to grab it down okay I will repeat the process again so we have inset that face and then press E to extrude ask to left the the face on the same place and then G and Z to move it on the Z axis I think that is good <clears throat> Now let's inset again, just a little bit, okay, and now E to extrude and Z to move it up. I think that is good. Okay, now we have the button created. Let's click tab to exit the edit mode. I think that is good. Um, but now we need to apply the subdivision modifier to round those edges. So let's go here, add modifier, subdivision, and click 3 on render and 3 on the viewport. Please make sure that you will not increase these values too much or it will decrease your computer speed. So you need to be careful on that. Um, but now it have subdivided uh, our object and we have uh, rounded uh, our shape. Um, that's not the final aspect that we want. So we need to create some uh, edge loops over here. First, let's just uh, hide the cube. And the first thing is to select this face over here and press the delete key to delete them. And now let's create some edge loops. Control R for this one over here. Control R because we want it to be a little bit round. Okay. Control R. That's good. Control R yes and to finish let's select this face on top and press e to inset the faces okay mm, i think that is pretty good actually i just have forgot to do something so press tab make sure that you have let's go to the top view okay. no I think that that is good no problem let's just make the the cube visible again click on 7 to go to the top view Select the, this object, Shift D to duplicate it, and X to be on the X axis, okay? I think that they are good now, okay? Now we can start making this part over here. It is a simple thing to do. Press Shift A to add a mesh. Let's add a cube. 7 to go to the top view and S to scale the cube. Okay. I think that is good. Let's just scale it on the Y axis and on the Z axis. Okay. Okay, 
I think that is good. I'm making this by eye because the only reference that I have is this one. That's up to you. You can use uh, the, the measures that you think that will fit better for you. Okay. But now we have those round edges over here and we need to do the same here. So click on tab. Make sure that we have all the edges selected. Probably they are. Let's just hide the cube. Okay. And let's hit Ctrl B to bevel. Okay. Not too much for this case. That's good, I suppose. Yes. Select object and add some smooth on it. And now, as you can see, we have already this part created. Now let's create um, a new cylinder over here. Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. If you click on 7 to go to the top view, you can see where it has been created. We want them back a little bit. Press G and Y. I think that is good. Now let's go to the to the right view. Press G and Z to move it on the Z axis. S Z. Let's scale them. G and Z. Okay, that's good. Now click on Tab to go to Edit Mode. Select this face and press I to insect the faces. Okay, now press E and Z to extrude on the Z axis. That's good. And now let's press I to insert the faces again. Okay, let's do the same process, E and Z. And then I to inset those faces. Okay, that's good. And now press E and Z to extrude them on the Z axis. And then S to scale it up a little bit. Okay, now let's just uh, round those edges over here. Let's add another, again, a subdivision modifier. Okay, let's hide the cube and the cube. Select this face over here and delete it. Okay, and now let's add some loop cuts, Control R. Okay, control R. Control R over here too. And control R here and here and here. And over here, we are going to delete this face. Okay. That's pretty good, actually. Let's add Shade Smooth and make our other objects visible. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. We just need to add this sphere over here. So Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere, G and Z move it on the Z axis, 7 to go to the top view, and G to move it on the Y axis. Let's just see. I think that's pretty good. Just Let's just move it up a little bit. Okay. It is a little too big relative to this one, but I like it uh, this way, so that's up to you. You can use your uh, your own imagination. Let's just add some 
shade smooth and now we have our uh, joystick uh, created um, let's go to the right view and move it up to this line over here press G and Z that's good now let's start uh, texturizing our model but first let's create the background plane so shift A mesh plane S to scale it and 50 to scale it 50 maybe not maybe 100 okay now let's create the, the, the materials let's create uh, this one first go to the shading tab let me just activate uh, cycles render what we are going to do is compatible with EV2 but I will use cycles for this one uh, first let's add some light here shift a light area G and Z and S to scale the light okay okay let's increase the light values maybe to 500 okay that's good for now now let's go to the shading tab click on the base it have already a material applied to it but if not you can create a new one by clicking here okay uh, the base color it will gonna be black and if you look at the reference uh, we have those that noise over here so what we need to do is to shift a let's add a wave texture over here and let's connect the color to the displacement here okay and these values I have done this before these values should be maybe 15 over here 21 over here 16 over here and 9.8 over here okay as you can see we have created the noise I think that's good mm, I need this surface to be uh, a little less ruggedness and the color is black nice let's select this one and create a new material it will gonna be black and I want them to be more shiny than this one let's create a new one over here I'm sorry that we are going it is going to be red okay hit tab let's put the top of the bottom red so make sure that you have x-ray activated to select the background okay press 3 just select all these faces and then click on assign click on tab to exit the edit mode and as you can see it is red I, I can do the same for this one but I will duplicate 7 shift D on the X axis okay that's pretty good now let's I think that for this one we can use the same okay uh, one thing that I have forgot to do are that buttons over here there's no problem we are going to create it now so shift A to add a cube press G to move them to move it on the y-axis and G to move it on the z-axis okay 
click on tab to go to edit mode select the vertices let's select these two vertices over here press the delete and let's remove them okay now select that three press f to connect the faces select that three press f and then let's select these four ones and press f okay now let's select all the faces Control b to be, to be valid just a little bit okay that's good now let's press 7 to go to the top view and tab to exit the edit mode press g to grab it s to scale it down i think that they are good g okay press 3 to go to the left view go to the right view and then g and z to move it up that's pretty good shift d to duplicate it on the y x axis and then r to rotate 180 no nope. r on the x 180 no nope. 90 uh, 90 no nope. let's do it again r y 180 that's it r and press y to rotate it on the y axis and 180 i think they are a little bigger relative to these ones so let's select them both press s to scale them down Click on 3 to go to the right view, G to grab them, and Z to grab them on the Z axis. And let's move them up a little bit. And then G and Y over here. Now let's go to the top view, G and Z, G and Z, X. okay they are good for me now let's go to the shading tab and we can apply the same red to this ones over here i think that's good that's good and now for this one we can apply the red one too okay and for this case we need to apply the black and then the red so click on tab let's select the black okay and then make sure that you have x-ray activated select all that faces i'm sorry faces click on new material let's select red and assign we need to make another loop cut over here because the texture is not go going to the bottom so control r that's perfect tab and now we have all of our object texturized so click here let's make the environment background color darker so that it will become more retro so that here to see to see it in the preview mode okay let's increase the light just a little bit 600 and that's basically it um, i hope that you have liked this this tutorial um, and i hope that it, it can be 
very useful to you. Um, if you have liked it, uh, please uh, subscribe uh, my channel.